suggest let us know uh, a little bit about hockey and what we do here every Wednesday. Hockey is such a beautiful soul. He, every single week, is out here serving the city in an intentional way because of his own story. When I met Hockey, I learned that he came from a background where, you know, not only did he make something of himself from, you know, humble beginnings, but he is constantly of service, serving other people that he knows and doesn't know across the city in such a beautiful way. I love Hockey. I met Hockey here, amazing person. Um... He brings pizza all the time and he, be, he brings all his friends here who has different type of businesses, which is amazing. Amazing person, amazing soul. What he does here is amazing. Um, we, you know, every week, rain or shine, I mean, we're here. Rain, snow, doesn't matter, cold. Very good. And he's always been here. Mr. Mayor, what picture? So I'm doing a documentary about hockey. Is there something you want to say about him? Listen, amazing, amazing, amazing American dream story. <laughs> yes. You know, not only did he come here with nothing built up, gave back, but now he's out here giving back in a real way. You know, just goes to show you. When you deposit into the social bank of life, you have equity when you you need it. And when you need to draw on that equity, it's there for you. Only way you can have an insufficient fund if you never deposit. Deep deposits. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Harvey Epstein. I'm a local assembly member here in the Lower East Side. And I met Hockey many years ago, and uh, his altruism and commitment to our community, commitment to justice for people is like un unmark un really remarkable. He time and time again really steps up and helps people in a way that you don't see most people do. He cares deeply about the struggles of humanity and really wants to do what he can to make the world a better place. And he just came to the United States, you know, was homeless, lived in poverty, decided to start a business, became a pizzeria, became internationally known, uh, but that still makes, he's still like the same hockey he was, like a kind, caring, loving person who's there to give back to the world, and he continues to do that, no matter how famous he gets, he's still there every day, giving food to homeless people, giving in this community, and caring deeply about his friends and families. It's a really honor to know that amazing human being. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, so. I knew Aki for 13 years, you know, when he first came into the neighborhood, 2010. You know, um, he opened up the shop and my kids was going to Manhattan Charter School. And uh, every day after school, they love pizza, so we'll go and, and shop with Aki. You know, and, and one thing I love about Aki is that he's for the community. Uh, at the time, when, when the kids didn't have it, you know, they couldn't, have, they couldn't afford a slice, he's giving out slices for free. You know, and, and that's real big uh, for, for a community leader, you know, to give back. At the end of the day, it's all about the give back. You know, you got to come back to your neighborhood and, and, and make sure you blossom the neighborhood, make, make sure everybody looking good. Um, Aki, we love you. You know, say thank you for everything you do for the low east side, my brother. And I wish you nothing but the best. Many years of more success. Boopa signing out. Mr. Skills and Drills, man. Love, baby. That's we good, love man. you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it was such a great opportunity to uh, to meet Hockey and understand that this is a guy that has 16 restaurants, came off the streets and was homeless, just never forgot where he came from, continues to give back. You'd think the guy would be exhausted at times, but no matter where he is, his energy is always high, he's always smiling. You can't get the guy to talk about himself. Everybody talks about him because he's so modest. And I think that's really the essence of Hockey and what what makes him so amazing. We're really blessed to have hockey in our lives. He's got the biggest heart. He uh, came to a charity event that we were honored at the other day, and uh, every dollar amount that they asked for bidders, hockey was raising his hand every time. He just wants to give back, and it's amazing what he does every week here for nine years, and feeding the homeless, and uh, so generous, and uh, we can't wait till the news breaks about him donating his million slice of pizza. Nice. And uh, we're just really blessed to have him in our lives. Hi everyone, I'm Council Member Christopher Marte. I've known hockey now for probably eight to nine years. The first day I met him was we were having an event just literally across the street in a school backyard where he delivered dozens of pizza for kids, for family, during one of our fairs in the community. And he's always been that man. Every single event we had, Hockey was always there to give whatever he had, whether it's pizza, love, support, financially, 
to this community. And so, you know, he is a champion of the Lower East Side, and I'm here to give him an award shortly for everything he's been able to do. And then we have a great guy named Haki, who owns a, a number of pizzerias. His story about his life is, is unbelievable. He was one time homeless, he came here from Turkey, and he established himself by getting a job and working his way all the way up to owning 10, 10 stores. And he comes down, he gives back every weekend with us. He brings 30 to 50 pizza pies every Wednesday. And he's just one of the great things about doing volunteer work. You, you establish these great friendships, and he's one of them that I, I'll have for the rest of my life. And uh, I just love the guy. You ready? I'm always ready, baby. Oh, man. You get nervous more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Who are you? Who I am? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, I'm Haki Agdenis. I am a kid from Silvan Diyarbakir in Turkey. With big dream, always believe in, and myself. What do you miss about your country? What do I miss about my country? Yes. A lot of things. A lot of memories. When you are kids, with little thing, you're so happy. It's not about money, it's about like friendship, about like more a hey, family, and it's about like just have a fun on the street, which is me just go play, you know, like, and you kids, of course, you know, like, old memory when I was kids, I have the best memory. Why come to New York? Oh boy, that's a big dream. Actually, you know, like, it's not I want to come to New York. First, I want to Canada. Because my brother over there. And go over there, work over there. Things didn't go right. Then, I have no choice. They deport me, actually, in Canada. And then, I have to move the country. So, either I get to go to my country, or other different country. And I choose to come to New York. How did you imagine New York before coming here? Well, when I come to New York, actually, it's not about want to leave New York. I was planning to go back into Canada. But things didn't go right, so I stuck in New York. But I'm so glad that I stayed in New York. You were homeless. How did that happen? Well, when I come over here, like I say, I was I come over here with a friend of mine. He invited me. I'm not gonna say with a big hope, big dream, but a reality it become big dream. Uh, he invited me. He said, "Haki, if you come to New York, uh, I will help you." I said, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yes, not a problem. I will help you with job. I will help you the place that you can stay." And I said, "But I don't speak English." He said, "Not a problem. I'm here for you. I get it." But when I come over here, that my friend, you know, like broke my heart and he let me down. He gave me hope for two and a half days at Port Authority, but at the end of the day, he didn't show up. And that's what exactly, after that, I become homeless. After a week after that, I become homeless, actually. How you came out of homelessness? Well, the camo for homelessness, it was not easy. But uh, like I said, I always have a big hope and I have no choice to be more homelessness on the street because I have to find a way to get a job, to work and to save it and to just be able to pay rent and leave it and go back into Canada with my ex-wife. But it, it took it, it take a long. I was, I was so lucky. They take me almost over three half months to come out from homelessness. How are you helping with others? How I help others? Uh, I mean, uh, when I was on the street, someone helped me as well. I know what it means to help others, to feel. And when you help them, not only just financially and mentally as well, I always say, don't just give money. When you give money, talk to them, listen to their story, then give them money, talk to them. Maybe they're they, they hungry, 
Maybe they wanted something else. Maybe they just, they, they don't want food, you know, just don't, don't buy them food. Ask them, maybe they want some medicine, for example. Maybe they want to smoke a cigarette, <laughs> just whatever. So to help them, actually, you know, is, is, is that question is for every human being, not only just for hacking. We all can help others. Others, people, they need help from us. And when someone asks you to help, just help them right away. Don't say, let me think. I'll let you know. Don't give the hope. Because the hope is the biggest regret one day you will have it. Don't ever give like empty hope to anyone. When you give hope, make it happen. Otherwise, you broke that person heart for the rest of his life. He will never forgive you. What do you think we can all do better to help homeless? We all should think the life is not fair for everyone. We all go through a lot of struggles. We all have a bad time and good time. A lot of people, we have a bad time, but we don't think it will be a good time tomorrow, better than today. And if we think the old struggle we're going through is temporary, absolutely we all can help homeless people. Because me, especially me, I could go back again, I could be homeless again. So we all should think, you know, like we could lose everything that we have. I have a lot of friends, they lose all the money, all everything they have, they lose it. And now they don't have nothing. Hi, Yes, sir. Why pizza? <laughs> pizza, it's been in my life almost like more than more than half my age, obviously. I'm 43 and I've been making, you know, like in, in a bakery and the, the dough almost 30 years. Because when I was a young kid, in my hometown, Sylvan, I was making lahmacun work in bakery. And when I went to Canada, I worked with my brother in Pizzeria. And when I come over here, the first job that I find at Pizzeria. So I've been making pizza home almost like all my life. I'm 43, so 30 years. Yeah, you know, so. Pizza, it just, it just make me, by the way, I don't know nothing else. I'm not, I'm not chef, you know, like, I don't know how to drive. I don't know how to swim. I don't know how to, you know, go clubbing or like, like gambling. I'm, I, you know me, like, I'm not, I just love to always, I focus my work. I will say like, I'm very, very, very hard worker. I work like seven days and I'm not feeling tired. I'm just so blessed. God gave me like just so much energy, but because like I love what I do. And I would say when you love it and when you want it, those two things are very important. And that's me. I really love it and I want to work. And that's what I become who I am today. How and when did you get your first pizza place? The p <laughs> pizza place? Well, in 2000, like 2002, 2003-ish. So like when I was working in a pizza shop in Hoboken, me and my best friend, we decided to open one pizzeria one day. And obviously we were living in like a small room. Uh, I was sleeping on the floor, he was sleeping on the sofa. One room, we don't have like, you no. Know, it's like studio obviously. But we were paying like $400 a rent. Actually not even four, it was like 350, I believe. So when, when me and him, we decided we want to open a pizza shop and the dream that day is started. But uh, the dream that we both have it, we want to own a pizza shop. We find a place, we save money for three, four years. We save money enough that we can be able to buy a pizzeria. We find place, the place on Upper East Side. Second Avenue and I believe like 70 Street, 73rd, 74, I believe. So two days before that we're gonna go sign a contract. That my best friend, he took all our safe and he ran away. That day, it hurt me, man. It really hurt me a lot. It hurt me, it teach me, do not trust a lot of people. And me, 
as Hagia then is. I still trust a lot of people. Do I make the same mistake? Absolutely I do. That's what, how you can be more stronger. Because if that person didn't take what we have that day, I wouldn't become who I am today. And all the struggle we're going through, it make it more stronger and stronger and stronger. We learn. What are your future goals? For me, just to be a good person, good human, work so hard, and be able to, you know, like to live better life. And of course, as you know, I always, you know, like love helping others. Not one day, not two day, one week or one month, not one year, it's been almost like 10 years, well, 11 years. I put this in my heart and in my mind and I will never stop do what I do right now. When you do a lot for others, God give you a lot for you. Believe me, you cannot, you cannot compete with Him. You give one, He give you two, you give two, you give like 40, you give 40, you give like triple, non-stop, you know what I mean? And you cannot compete with Him. Just be a good person, work so hard, be able to do something, and just give it back because giving back will never make you poor. Never ever. Will make you richer. A lot of people think, oh, you know what? I have some, if I give, I'm not gonna have none, I will be poor. No, no, no. You give, you will get it back. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but I promise you, whatever you give, you will get like so many bigger and more to back to you. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, I mean, 10 years ago, if you told me, Haki, would you believe that what you have today, 10 years ago, would you believe this? I mean, you have to believe yourself. Limit is a sky, man. You just believe yourself and work so hard. You could be way better than today. You say 10 years, 10 years a lot, you know what I mean? So 10 years compared to today, me, I'm like, Way, 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 you know, like I make so much. I believe hustling. If you hustle a lot, you work a lot, and you, 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 but whatever you make, you get to save some for, you know, like for future. So if you do that, I think there's no such a luck. The, the hardest work you work, so the lucky you become. All you need is work so hard. But a smart way, of course, you know, not just. Work so hard and the money you make today and you just go save it and then, you know, I mean, spend it. You don't need to do that. The money you make it, just always at least save like 30%, whatever you do. Haki, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for so many things in life. First of all, I'm so thankful for God that He always protect me. He is the biggest security in my life. He is the biggest bless that give it to me every morning when I wake up. And I know that I woke up today. It's for a reason. It was a purpose in life for me. He's been always so good to me. Whatever I ask to him, and he give it to me. Way more than I ask. And I am always grateful for what I am today. And my mom, it's, it will be, I think it will be the, the most important person in my life. Thankful for her as well. Talk to me about Wednesday nights. So Wednesday night, it's a, it called a, Wednesday night, it's called PCNY. Uh, people connecting in New York. So PCNY, I met them about nine years ago. Uh, there were Eighth Avenue on 31st or 30th Street, I believe. Uh, I think it was 31st Street. Yeah. Uh, they told me there's like, you know, like there's a, some people on the street and giving back, giving food away to homeless people. And I was doing this in a front body mission. And I used to go like front breaking ground. And sometimes I used to go like uh, front train station and Delancey in Essex, just give them you know, like every day give like one pie or like left over from my store. Never put a garbage, never ever. Still, always we, you know, we give it to them. And when I met them and 
it make me feel be so actually you know what like more friendship with them I really love them you know like especially like Wayne he make me like so much welcome and his mom Susie uh, since then we never stop I think like one week I believe I could make it but uh, it's been almost like nine years non-stop every Wednesday we go on 34th Street 8th Avenue so many people you know unite together and as you see not only just food they bring a lot of clothes, they bring a lot of medicine, and then we, we offer them job, we help them. We're not going over there just high, we just not giving food. There's a lot more than a food. But you know what? We love it. We really love it. Okay, what does a typical day look like for you? So every morning when I wake up, first of all, first, I always pray for God, okay? It, it may take me like maybe like even like five seconds, to be like one minute. I always said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I woke up today and I know I will do a lot of, you know, like work and, and do good things. Um, what I do, I like to be silent for like at least like, you know, like about like five minutes in the morning. I don't like to touch a phone at least like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I do a lot of deep breath, meditation, relax. And I like to read a book, just like maybe 10 page in the morning. That make me like my mind like more clean, like more relaxed. Uh, take a shower. And what I do, I love in a breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. I don't like breakfast. I just drink like, you know, like I make like a, uh, some like smoothie. Yeah. And I check my emails because emails are important. And I make sure first thing, I watch a camera. All my store, are they open? If they open, if I see any mistake, I call them. Hey, we need to do this, that. I call my manager. I call my general manager. I want to make sure like everything is you know like on schedule, everything is smooth, everything is on the road, and then I start my day and I make a couple phone call, obviously, and then I go out. Then I go like store by store. Well, usually I start from Regal Park. I go to the one on uh, Costco Mall. Then I go to a Astoria. Then I go to Ditmars. Sometimes, you know, like I go to Flushing, sometimes I go to Almond, then I hit the Lower East, Lower East Side, I go to Clinton Street, sometimes I go to Rivington, uh, I go like a Soho, the end one. Because, you know, like, you know, I don't drive, I'm a train guy or Uber guy. Uh, the end, I go like either Lower East Side, Essex, or Soho. So, pretty much, I go almost every day to every store, six or seven days. People that say, hey, what is your day off? Obviously, you know, like, like, I love what I do, and day off is for me is not important. Day off when I have a good time for my family, and I go out with them, just go eat, that's day off for me. I don't have such a time, I have to be work like nine o'clock, or I have to finish like 9 p.m. Sometimes I go like nine o'clock, but I come home like, you know, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and, People that call me a hacky is like workaholic instead of like alcoholic. I work a lot, but I love what I do. I, I, I love it, man. It doesn't bother me. I only just make me look older, look like age, but it's okay though, you know. I, I, one of my friends, he make a fun of me. He said, uh, I told him, well, you, you, you know, like he's tall, like six to good looking guy, okay? I said, brother, well, God bless you, very good looking, we want to make a job. He said, heck, it's okay, brother, man, you have a good heart. You know, so he, he said, you are ugly, but you have a good heart. So, <laughs> and that's, you know, <laughs> that's in reality, yes. <laughs> I don't want to be, you know, like ugly, but I want to be beautiful on the inside. And that's the most important thing for me. Always, you know, you have to have beautiful here, my here. That's for me. Kindness make you the most beautiful person in the world. Never give up. Even life, it knocks you down. Always have a hope and have a faith.
and believe it. Each one and teach one. That's how this world will be so beautiful with our kindness. Respect and love and kindness have no relation. Just choose kindness. Dream it, believe it, have a plan and make it happen. If I hug you like Dennis, make it, I promise you, it's so easy for you to make it happen too. All you need, just believe it, man. That's all you need. When you going to a lot of struggle, when the hardest time in your day or your time, leave it. Time is the best medicine for you. Just wait. It may, may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but I promise you, the third day, it will be so sunshine. Just wait, wait. Not everybody make it age 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60. Let's just wait. Time is the best medicine. Just wait. Your time is coming. Believe yourself. You can make it. Don't be too quick to judge someone because you never know that person what have been going through in his life that day or past. Just don't judge. Humanity will take you to every level. I always say, humanity and kindness, I call MVP. Usually they use this for like basketball play, but you know what? It's for good for human being. Just choose always to be more humble. Doesn't matter what you have and who you are. All you need, choose to be kind and be humble. Don't show people, don't show all people what you have. Be kind to them. Be kind. Be the reason someone smiled today. And you know what? Only awesome people make history. History is not about money. It's about legacy that you leave behind you. When you're done from here, let people talk about you for the rest of everybody's life. You know what I mean? Leave history. Leave legacy. Not money. Leave kindness behind you. So you know what? Like Muhammad Ali. He never died. You know he never died. He's still alive. We, every day we talk about him. Because he was so kind, he was so amazing person to everyone. And be exactly just like that. Leave legacy behind. You can't wait until life it's get hard enough until you become kind to people. Just choose kind. The first step you're going out, just be kind. Choose that kind. I always talk about kindness. Believe me, it will take you so long way. An example for that. Believe that. Haji, do you miss your country and family back home? Uh, I do miss my country a lot. Um, I do miss a lot. The one thing the most is the miss, I think, I miss my, my father. <laughs> he didn't see me uh, when I become success. He always believed me that I would become, you know, like I'm so hard working. Even when I was young kids, you know, like, do like shine, sh like shoe shine, go sell a candy, you know, like to sell like, you know, like Turkish pizza, lahmacun on the street, make it, be able to make money. Like I told you, I dropped in third grade elementary school. I didn't finish my elementary school. Uh, always just work so hard. I think the biggest missing for me, I always talk to my mom, my family. <laughs> my father. He was my hero. Sorry, man.
I wish, I wish my father see my success. He was, my father, he never, never ever hurt my feeling, you know, even if he don't have nothing, he always try to give something to us. And me, I love chocolate. When I was young, I just love chocolate. And always my father, always when he come home, I would just go look him in his pocket. He always have some chocolate, some candy in his pocket. Before I got, you know, like go in his pocket, he just grabbed me and lift me up and just hold me and kiss me. And I'm like, ah, uh, was my hero, man. I always say, I wish he see my success. He couldn't, he couldn't be able to see me, but uh, I think he's watching me right now. I believe that. So, people out there, you know, like when they have father, just love them, man. Love them, respect them, and be thankful for them. Because when they're done, when they're not here, impossible. They bring it back, so always just love them, man. Call them. To FaceTime, go see them, buy them gift. Even you buy them like a cup of coffee, you make your father so happy. He doesn't need your coffee, but if you give him one cup of coffee, just a cup of tea, buy him anything, he will be so happy. It doesn't matter how rich he is, whatever he had, with a small thing, when they receive from their kids, they will be so happy. And I'm a father, I have two beautiful kids. When my son, he buy me something, he make me so happy. I don't, you know, like just, it make me so happy. So, people out there just love your parents, man. Parents, it's only one. When you don't have it, you miss them a lot. I never want to talk about my father. I always, It hurt, man. Sorry, man.